Hi, would you like to know how Michael Waddell got his focus stacking handheld to work? Hand holding macro stacking is super hard, but I'm going to show you how he achieved it. For the best advice on macro focus stacking, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video every Thursday. My name is Jana Sullivan and I'm honored to be one of the top 15 macro websites to follow in 2021. I'm also the founder of the Creative Mentorship Program, where we help macro landscape and nature photographers make world-class photography that they're proud of and they're excited to share with the world. Here you see I'm using a flash and a 100 millimeter macro lens. Uh, Michael Waddell also used a macro lens and a flash because the flash is really the ticket, especially when it comes to bug photography. So, you know, look inside and get deep within your area. You don't have to go too far. Pay attention to see if the leaves are really cool or there's bugs flying around. And then when you find a subject, shoot for the eyes if it's an actual bug or if it is some leaves that really get you excited then what is the most important part that you like i would suggest start with that and then start moving your lens up and down very slowly taking the shots and getting the stack and then try another composition and then moving the stack up and down with your lens gently because you don't need too much when it comes to focus stacking but since we're hand holding i highly suggest to really try it f8 f11 and then see how much you can get you don't want a lot of stacks on hand holding it will be really difficult to use to grab some great details on focus stacking I have a Helicon Focus video and a Zareen Stacker video that really gives you some details about focus stacking. Now we're going to get into post-processing, but Michael Waddell used Photoshop and I'm going to show you how to use On One Photo Raw. To get started, I have my selection and then I did a shift click with the images that I focus stack. And over on the right side, what you'll do is you will go ahead and push focus to tell on one that this is what you want to do some focus stacking you'll see a new window pop up with the focus stacking information so let's go over this so you can see that over to the left is the aligned photos i have that ticked and the layer results ticked i'm going to open it in develop and uh, the depth of field is uh, the one to the left is for your foreground. The one to the right is for your background. And you can adjust that if you want. Despeckling is basically when you have an area that maybe didn't work very well. There's some halos, so you can move that despeckling up. But when it comes to threshold and sensitivity, I really highly suggest just moving the sliders. Once you like what you've got, click save and it will begin to render all of the images that you have chosen at the bottom you can see the arrows checked there and we'll merge them together knowing that you want a focus stack now it's difficult because this has been handheld so we shall see what it does and boom i am put into the edit module so I can process this image. That's what I told on one to do. This way we can start having some fun post-processing. You can see this is the before image and look at how awesome it did it. We did a really great job putting those images together. On one's absolutely amazing. This next segment is for those of you that really want to focus stack with more details. It's a little bit more advanced but it really works well. So let's give you those details. You can see I handheld, I love that middle part. So I started with that, then I did some stacking of different leaves around that middle area, trying to get as much as I can, hand holding 
And then what I did was I went ahead and I merged them together. But what I like to do is actually use red. See, I use a little red square that kind of lets me know that this stack it's ready to go. And then I push focus and make sure that everything that I like is ready to go. But I do want to mention to you. So right now in the pop up, what you see in front of you is what you'll get, which is really cool because you don't have to worry about the stack because you're seeing it. So if something needs to be changed, you can change it now with your depth of field, with your despeckle, the threshold, how much do you want to have the on one program look at all of your pixels, the sensitivity of the pixels, like details you want a lot of details you want it sensitive to really hone in sometimes when you do the sensitivity you can have tough areas that are soft and I'm pointing out the soft areas but in this particular image it's really cool that I can just go ahead and fix these areas with a little bit more advanced techniques let me know the best tips so far that you've received in this video so one of the things is you could see over here to the right these are the masks and if you feel like the mask is not doing its job see so you could go like this remove see like right in here you could see it got better so what you can do is go to this mask see now it's funky you can go to the mask and then what you're going to do is you want to paint in this image right here because we already show it already showed us that that image is much better when it comes to the background. So I like to get in close. So I just moved up in here. I'm going to use my space bar to get the hand tool so I can bring it down so I can really see what I'm doing. And I'm going to feather it. The feather seems to be okay. Let me just make this smaller. And we're going to remove some of this mess, okay? Because it's painting, it's going to paint in what this image file had in it. So that's one way that you can fix problems. Say that you want to um, fix something else in this image. Let's, we'll look down in here, right? And let's just say none of these, pretend none of these images work well. And maybe I want to pull in another image. So what I like to do is merge these together. This little button right here, you can see, you click on that, it's just going to merge it all together. And then I like to make a little copy of this same image here. And then what I'll do is I'll go to this plus sign right here, click on that, and now you can pick another image. So let's look and see what we have here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to add this as a layer at the bottom right. And now, uh, obviously, it's taking over because it's at the top. What we want to do is we want to take the opacity down on this image so we could see what's behind. So, and then you go to the transform tool over here to the left, click on that transform tool. And with that transform tool, you could move this image. See, I'll, I'll make it bigger so you can see. You can move this image to anywhere you want. This one we are going to add in. So I'm looking at it. Then I'm going to take this and I'm going to invert the mass. I just pushed on the mass. I'm going to invert it. So now you no longer see it. But what we're going to do is we're going to get the brush. And so up here at the top, I'm just going to take my flow. My opacity is 100. You can see the feather. Again, I like to get up close to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to just bring this up, use my shift bar, pull it up. Okay, so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to paint in. It's going to be white. See, it's painting it in and just make that flow. I'm going to crop because you could see it had some errors, but let's just show you anyways. And then you could just change the opacity to see, see with all the mess. So that's how you fix it and with an image or using the mask.
Download my ultimate and yes, essential macro photography toolkit to get your hands on my top macro photography creation resources to make your next images spectacular so you can create work faster without the guesswork. Check out the link down below in the description. Would you like to share your work in our Facebook group? This private Facebook group is adventurous just for macro photographers. I jump on live on Tuesdays to answer your questions on macro photographing, lighting, post-processing, equipment, and selling your work. The link is also down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and share it with your friends. And always remember that your thousand words does make a difference. Cheers.